Okay, we're recording. Okay, I'm going to call the Finance Committee meeting of Friday, June 16, 2023, to order at 1.30 p.m. And thank you. Uh, and Alicia has joined us just in time so that as I go through the roll call, I think everybody we're expecting for this meeting is now here. So let me go through and just make sure that everybody can hear me and um, that um, we can hear them. So we'll start with Hana. Present. Lynn. Present. Bob. Present. Matt. I'm here. Bernie is absent, so the minutes should um, indicate that he's unable to attend. Uh, Kathy? Yes, here. And obviously I'm here, and so Alicia? Here. Okay, so thank you for all for being so prompt, and uh, I think that what we wanted to do, and we've already told Holly this, is that we're going to do the third quarter report uh, a little bit later in the meeting so that we can get to, um, I was I was going to do public comment, but I don't think that there's any public comment at this point. So uh, that'll allow us to go straight to the question of uh, council compensation in that discussion. And uh, so, I guess that uh, we should just launch into it. If there are people who show up later, I will ask for um, if there's public comment again, we'll not just close out public comment because nobody's here now. I really want to make sure that if there's anybody who's commenting on the agenda item we're talking about today, that they have an opportunity to do so. So having said that, um, after our last meeting, um, I did a summary of where we were, and Lynn is going to put it on the screen. It's in the packet. And um, what I tried to do was to uh, summarize the points where I think that we had agreement from the first discussion. And then um, at the, the second group is things that I felt that we needed to discuss for this meeting. So what I wanted to do as a start was to go back to the last meeting and see if there is agreement with the summary points that I have put forward, which are the top list one through six. And I'm not going to read them, but I'm going to take a moment just to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to read them, even though they have been in the packet and are in the packet, so that uh, hopefully you've had a chance to look at it, think about it already. And then what I'm going to ask is uh, for anybody who has a question or concern about a summary point or how it's stated to raise their hands, and I'll start with Kathy since she's already done so. I can't hear you. Oh, sorry. Am I? Can you not hear me? No, I can. Am I okay? It's a little bit dim, but we can't hear you. So just you can't. You can't hear we, me. We can. Yes. Go ahead. Okay. Um, I totally agree with one through six. My question just is looking down to one through five, the fifth in that list seems to be at odds with number six, that we're just going to focus on counselor. So that's, it's a question. I'm totally in agreement with six, the one through six, the agreements from the first meeting. Okay, um, duly noted. And uh, actually that was written early and uh, uh, as you'll see in a little bit, uh, Lynn has been working on some motions to, to help the discussion along and to let us do this as a series of motions. So uh, we should have uh, the uh, 
the, the motions uh, have been including discussion of uh, um, other type topics. So um, so if there's a agree, is there anybody who has concerns about what we decide um, that that's a fair summary one through six of the first meeting? Let's stick with that for a moment. Lynn, did you have a motion on that or do you want to just? No, I don't. I, I want to make sure we go through the discussion and then we have motions that go to the council. Okay. Okay. Uh, so as far as uh, the number five, I, I, the only thing I'd say about it, Kathy, is, is that it says whether to include, I believe was the wording, and uh, therefore it's a committee decision. And that's it's just something then that has to be discussed today. And if the answer is no, then the answer is no, and then we won't include any committee observations uh, about those issues. Is that fair? Okay. Yeah, no, it's just for, let's get on with this. I was just pointing out that four and five and to be discussed seem to be at odds with six. So when we get to it, Lynn, we can clean it up. I don't want to labor the point. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, uh, uh, one of the the other co-sponsor, Alicia is one co-sponsor of the original proposal. The other co-sponsor is now in the attendee list is Councillor uh, Miller. And uh, is there any objection to bringing uh, Councillor Miller into the meeting? No, I think we definitely should bring her in. Uh, I can't do that. Athena, can you? Hey, Michelle, hi. Hey, everyone. So you, we heard you, so we know you can hear us. So we're set on that. And uh, I don't think we have a uh, forum problem with council. So that would be the only reason that would have been a hesitation. So I think that we're on to the, um, put back to the questions that are at hand. and. Uh, I think that the first one, and I don't have to get it up. You want to put it up for a second again, Lynn? And uh, we should just start with the conversation where we had before, which is the amount of increase to propose, because I think what we had said was um, that the focus is about counselor compensation and not the others um so we want to get on to counselor compensation and um i know that several of you have been thinking about this question we did have a discussion at the last meeting about the amount to propose and I, and uh the other thing that Lynn, i don't know if you have it or not and that's we don't need it now but you haven't been giving some thought about um, a spreadsheet that would help illustrate amounts, the effective amounts as we as we talk about them. But I will start with Kathy. Okay, I, I'll start out just to, so we don't have dead silence. Um, what Lynn showed us last week, um, I think it was last week, that if we had received the same three percent that's been negotiated. And I think she did it over four years, but if you did it over five or saying the sixth is about to start, it gets to in the neighborhood of $1,000 more of a stipend. Um, and I would be comfortable with that amount. Um, I'm uncomfortable with what's been proposed for multiple reasons. And just to summarize them a little bit from last week, we are in a really tight budget situation. There was a long negotiation with the unions to reach yes. We turned down, we didn't go for the $85,000 extra that the school committee. So I, I'm really uncomfortable about us as counselors 
voting ourselves. And, and just to point out, a thousand would be a 20% increase. It's, it's pretty substantial. I'd be willing to go a bit higher than that, but I would start there. And it's for those reasons, the both optics of it. And when you talk about going all the way to 10, it's equivalent to a teacher. It's equivalent to some of our uh, mid-levels working for DPW. It's, it's real money um, in terms of people. So I'll just, I'll speak to that first. And then secondly, I don't think we should pay chairs of, of committees more. I think it is appropriate to pay the council more, the council president more. The charter set the extra two and a half, 2.5 thousand, 2,500. I'm not sure we need to hold 2,500, but I'm comfortable with that. We've started with that. But I don't think we should uh, start paying chairs more. I wanna make sure people are comfortable rotating through as chairs. It's an opportunity to learn. So I, I'm just addressing your first two points with a starting point, knowing, knowing what the original proposal was. I'm start, clearly starting lower at the, and Lynn, I just took your spreadsheet out another 3%. Um, you didn't get all the way to a thousand of an increase. You were near there. I will stop. Okay, Alicia. Um, yes, thank you, Andy. So a, a couple of my thoughts, I, I feel like I still have to hear what other people say in terms of paying the chair more because I do hear Kathy's point there. And I do also think that like a substantial increase overall may accommodate those things, but I absolutely do not think that the small increase that was just shown on the screen is anywhere close to enough for one, to eliminate paying chairs more, and for two, just a general overall base salary for counselors. Um, and I did want to point out that it's actually not similar at all to what teachers get paid. It's actually similar to what other elected officials and other counselors get paid in other towns. So if you go back to the memo that uh, Michelle and I submitted with the motion, it shows what other towns in this area pay their counselors and Northampton is at the 10K now with what they're looking at to increase, and we are significantly lower than any other town in this area. So I think that our bait, our starting rate is already really low. I'd be interested in looking at the 3% increase once we already bump it up, but from where we're at right now, it doesn't make much sense since we're such so significantly lower than any other counselors in this area. Okay. Um. Just a second, I'm going to cut to Michelle, but uh, what you're looking at is the original proposal, and as you circle through the proposal, um, you see the amounts from other communities that have, were listed. This is directly from the proposal from Alicia and Michelle that started the discussion. So why don't you leave it on the screen for the moment, Michelle? Yeah, I um I think while I understand um Kathy's logic, uh I think that it was the charter commission actually that uh sort of started the base salary off too low as compared to other communities as we see here. And so I don't I'm not looking at it as going up from you know the 5000 that we have now um in increments like Kathy is I'm looking at it as I think it started off too low I don't want to call it a mistake by the charter but I think I don't think that the number that was chosen and 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 maybe there are reasons why it was chosen but I don't think that number was the right number to begin with so in my mind, I feel like we need to at least come on par with the other communities. Um, and I don't, I, I understand the argument or, or the concern about, you know, us paying ourselves, but, or, or that concern, I think I heard Kathy just say that, but I don't, I don't see that uh, I understand a process is needed and I, I like what Northampton did, but I don't see in this case, given that this isn't going to impact us, it's going to impact, uh, the, a few, the next council. 
Um, I think that we can look at it as sort of a revision of what the charter did initially and say, okay, we're cleaning this up a bit. That wasn't the, the, the that wasn't really the the right number at the time. And now we're we're making a revision to that. And then any other processes or steps we put in place that go beyond that, I think um can be looked at separately. That's that's my thoughts right now. Thank you. Other thoughts? Anna? Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to co-sign on, on what Michelle said. This is, I Kathy, I agree that a external group that would study this and go through a process to make a recommendation like Northampton just went through would be the ideal system. And now we know and we should change the process for next time. However, this proposal exists within our current process. And I don't think that we should, you know, penalize this, this proposal just because we didn't think, didn't realize that this process was, was flawed beforehand. So I think that we can do, I think we should do both um, in terms of following this established process for this proposal and changing it for the next time. Uh, I think both of those things would be appropriate, but I do not think it's it's fair nor right to, to say, we're not gonna do this just because we didn't like the rules that we set. That's it, thanks, Andy. Yeah, Alicia, are your hand is still up or is it Yeah, open? sorry, I just wanted to come back because that was something that I had forgotten to say during my comment as well, is that I also agree that changing the process might be a good thing to talk about, but that would be something asked. Like, I would like to talk about the proposal first and then changing the process, which I would also be in agreement with doing, setting up something similar to what Northampton did for, for future um, review and for going forward after this current proposal. Yeah, I have some thoughts and comments about the process piece, but I'm gonna save those for the very reason that you said at the beginning. I guess that um, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with doubling right now because um, struggling with our budget as we just did and knowing what the difficulties existed with the uh, negotiations of some of the collective bargaining agreements in the school, but there are also collective bargaining agreements in the town that are unsettled, uh, that it, it seems particularly awkward at best. And I think um, in, in addition to awkward, there's a question of the political consequence. And I, I look at um, one last thing, and um, I'm going to ask uh, for um, Lynn to come back to spreadsheets later, but the uh, um, other problem that I have is, is that I want to keep an eye on the total amount that we're talking about when we get towards the end of the discussion and look at it in context, because there are a lot of things that uh, we know that our departments needed and wanted in order to more effectively serve the community that couldn't be done because of um, what's here. And we've had a lot of concern about goals that have been uh, discussed within the council, including some of the um, recommendations uh, regarding the um, Community Safety Working Group, and um, that we um, haven't, um, that, that we're having financial questions about how to fit everything within the budget. And uh, so it's a question then of, you know, how are all of those goals or the ECAC staff that uh, uh, people who are advocates of the energy and climate action goals feel that we need in order to um, really to meet the goals that are there, uh, which is another high priority, um, as well as uh, some of the housing goals. And I 
um, am um, going to be um, a little bit uncertain about jumping into an increase where the council puts itself above any of those other goals. And uh, so I, uh, I think that that's what my hesitation has been about going too high. On the other hand, uh, I certainly uh, would feel that we need to make some substantial additional amount that uh, is beyond just um, the 3% uh, as, as if we had had 3% all along. So those are my thoughts. I'm not going to share them again because I'm going to try and focus on getting this group moving together. Matt? Spoken well, I, I just want to say I agree um, with the the need to do this increase. I think you know, I think we all, everybody agrees that we need a neutral process to give, you know, full recommendations, including, you know, a process for uh, annual amount, you know, and I, I think that's the most important thing is that is that that's an outcome in the next, you know, in the next few weeks is, is that there is a process in place um, so that this isn't, this is, this is going to, you know, be a, a long um, drawn out discussion. And I also understand that there's a need to, to do just, you know, um, sort of a cost of living uh, adjustment based on, you know, where the current numbers stand. Um, and I, you know, I, I appreciate, you know, Kathy coming in and kind of setting a, setting an initial number for the discussion. Um, and I, I think, I don't, I don't know that the number that I, that I'm going to finally support is the most full correction necessary. You know, I think I'd rather let the independent process bring us to the full correction um, I think I, I would like to do something that is substantive that makes a difference. Um, so I think, you know, I think a thousand is low for for where we are and, and where the need is. Um, to Andy's point just now, I'm I was hoping we would see, and maybe maybe this is drafted somewhere, but I was hoping we would see sort of um, impact projections for you know different amounts um, across the 13 counselors, school committee and others. Um, Bar, you know, without that, I think I think even without that, we know that we need to make an adjustment, and and I will support one. Um, but I think in terms of the the full correction, you know, if if it's true that the original charter commission was was wrong, or you know, wrong for today, shall we say, I think that full correction, the full amount, should be recommended by the neutral party, and not something that we try to figure out sort of you know on the fly as a as a group here. Um, so I guess I guess my feeling is that you know. I like Kathy's starting point, and and I I certainly would like to go higher, but I probably wouldn't encourage us to go the full two hundred percent, like 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 Andy said. Anna, thanks. Yeah, I'm really I'm challenged a little bit by the narrative that, and I know it's true. I'm not denying that it's true, but the narrative that we're trying to double our salary when you've got a low salary one well first i'm going to back up because one again it's not our salary if we choose to run again then that's that um and if we win then that's that but i think that the for me it's this is the the dollar amount that we're adding and the dollar amount that it would get to is is what's more relevant versus the the framing of it as a doubling because this is not something that we're going to try to keep doubling right like they're the the proposers of this brought forward an addition to bring it to $10,000. Um, and I think to, to frame it like we're trying to continuously double our salary is a little bit not aligned with what the goal is here. The goal is to improve access, to make it so that someone could do this job and take time away from their other job or could continue to, to have um, childcare or to, you know, I think there was an example in the last council where one of the counselors said, I don't have time to cook dinner on, on meeting nights. And so I have to order food and like that costs more than cooking. So, you know, I think that there've been calls for this for a while now, but I, I want us to just make sure that we're putting it in perspective of we're asking to add 5,000 per person, uh, not necessarily to keep doubling, doubling, doubling. So I know it's, I know it's nuanced and I know it might be seem trivial, but I, I do think there's a difference here, uh, especially when we're putting this in comparison to our other town projects. Thanks. So I think, uh, Michelle, I was, 
Do you have something to add? Please do. Yeah, I, ju I think that it is important for us to step back um, from ourselves when we're looking at this and, and think about if we were that commission um, and we were thinking about the town council and we weren't thinking about our individual standing as a counselor and we looked at this comparison chart, I mean, it's very, very clear in looking at this chart that we're way off base. We're not even really close to what um, the rest of the communities surrounding us. And many of these communities are increasing um, and looking to increase. So my thinking right now, because it seems like we're maybe not in agreement on a number is, you know, we want to pass this through the council and we want to find a number that will um, have a positive vote when it comes to the full council. And so I'm encouraging us to come to some compromise that we feel would, uh, that we feel would um, get us uh, across the finish line. And again, thinking about it as if we were the commission studying this um, for the council, how might we look at this in particular, again, when we just look at this chart, uh, you know, Anna spoke to the access issues and, 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 and Alicia spoke to the access issues and, and those, and, and our goals are DEI goals, but like really just what's here in front of us is in my mind enough to say, and I, I have to disagree with Matt um, on, even though I don't like to, but I have to, um, in in that we <laughs> um, don't want to make a full correction right now or let the process make the full correction. I don't think that sends the right message. I mean, this will be publicized. It will be a, you know, a political, uh, you know, has some political charge to it, I guess. And I think we need to actually make the correction um, now and then um, let the process uh, play out going forward. So I think kind of coming halfway and not making the full correction in my mind isn't the isn't isn't the right way. Andy, I can't put my hand up, but Ms. Uh, Alicia I'm not put her hand up. Well, Alicia, do you want to go before Lynn? Um, if that's okay, Lynn. I, I just quickly wanted to add a little bit to what Michelle was saying, uh, because I, in my opinion, the 10 isn't even the full correction, right? Because we're looking at Northampton, who's looking to increase to possibly 16, and like maybe our full correction is 12, maybe it's 15. I think 10 is just a substantial increase. I wouldn't even call it the full correction, um, to be honest. And also, just going off of Michelle's comment about putting yourself in shoes, um, because this is about diversifying the council and eliminating barriers to access and participation, I also encourage you to put yourself in the shoes of like a low-income person looking to run for council, a single parent looking to run for council, somebody who has to also support their entire family on one income who is looking to run for council and be a part, an active participant and an active part of this town. Like those are the people who I'm trying to accommodate with this initiative. Um, and trying to make it more inclusive and so that our government can be more represent, like more adequately represent the people who live in our community. And so I think it is really important to take those things into consideration that people literally who are interested in running for council and who have the skills that could benefit our town and experiences that could benefit our town literally cannot because they cannot sustain all of these commitments with the lack of compensation for the, the time commitments and the work commitments that come along with running for and serving on the council. So I would also encourage you all to very deeply take that into consideration because again, I think the nuance here is that nobody here is low income, nobody here is a single parent, nobody here is, is a part of those groups that I am talking about. So I can understand that you all may not need or understand, but there are people who need and who will run if this is available. Uh, so Lynn is next. Yes. Um, so I'd like to weigh in and then I'd like to share a chart uh, where we can look at the impact of various levels. 
because for me, that's one of the issues. Another one of the issues for me is that the town manager in the budget we have already approved has added in $5,000 as a quote starting place. And as you'll see in motions that I tried to develop before the meeting, uh, I refer to this as a pilot. I suggest that we look at that for um, a uh, on a quarterly basis, and maybe even that means we might add to it at some point with a supplemental. Uh, because to me, one of the expenses for uh, many people um, that Alicia is referring to um, is in fact family care, whether it be children or an older parent or a disabled child or what or whatever the case may be. So with that, uh, unless people are interested in continuing to look at the memo, I'd like to ask the chair permission to put up the chart. Go ahead. After you, after you're done. Um, I know I had it. Hold on. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay. So this is the chart we looked at the other day where, you know, we did the 3%. Okay. Right there, that's the 3%. Then this one is what Kathy just uh, suggested. That's the th that's the $1,000. This is one where we can plug and play. And this is the one where I took the full 5,000. Now, the reason you see no additional dollars where the president is, is because the amount they would get additional is in the salary of counselors. There's no additional amount to the stipend for the president. So what I'm suggesting is if there's other suggestions, I can plug them in here and we can look at impact. Because again, I feel impact is important. And I feel the fact that we have the family care line item as the beginning of a pool of money for that purpose um, makes a difference to me as to whether we um, do something less than 10 million, I mean, 10,000, 10 million, right, 10,000 or not. So that's where I am. Kathy has her hand up. Yeah, Kathy, go ahead. Uh, Lynn, I think that chart is, is very helpful. Um, one of the things on the chart, other chart we just saw is, uh, and this, I'm just, putting information out rather than a suggestion. The charter started out with a $2,500 bump for the president. The, the table we just saw, very few do that much. Um, there was a pretty big range um, and a few went up as much as 2,000. So what Lynn has done is just, there's not an additional amount that the president's already at something and then it goes up. So that's a piece. We can decide whether we want that differential. Um, uh, one other, I did look at one other town. I don't know. I didn't do the original survey. Greenfield is at is lower than what we see the other towns at, um, and Northampton is an outlier. So I don't think it's. I think it's important not to pick an outlier. The last piece is that we have thirteen counselors, and I think the original intent of the charter played with that large number because a lot of who wanted to keep town meeting were really concerned about going to a small number of people. So the compromise to try to win over some of the votes was five districts with two each plus three at large. That's, that's a, a relatively large council. And the reason where Northampton has nine, just for comparison. So everything we do has a bigger impact because we have a large council. And I don't believe we can change that until we go through a charter review. I'm not even sure the mid, 
mid 10 year charter review can change the number of counselors. It so cannot. I just, it cannot. So we, I shouldn't say we're stuck with, we have 13. So every time we take a number, it gets multiplied times um, 13 people. And Sean showed us the impact of five. I mean, it's pretty easy to figure out what the impact is by doing, is it one, two, something in between, not all the way. So I am concerned about the total increase. I do think we can and should strongly recommend a way of looking at this going forward. Um, so this is not the only time we visit this. And I, I like Northamptons. I'm not sure we need a standing committee, which is what they have. I think we could do an ad hoc committee um, or we could go to percentages. And so I see the increase we're talking about now is a step forward, not necessarily an ending place. And I would like to hear that come back. So um, those are all just pieces of information because what Lynn, most of Lynn's chart is to say, you know, if we just keep assuming present is always $2,500 more than whatever, wherever the counselors are. Um, so it's, I'm not even saying that there should be a decrease in that, but if we're looking at the comparisons, I have no idea where the Charter Commission came up with the 2,500. <laughs> I was hoping, I think they were thinking that the first multiple years of the council were gonna be a bear and the president would have an extraordinary amount of time just to help get us organized. And that certainly has been true. I'm, I'm finished. Lisa. Alicia, did you have something? Michelle? Go ahead, then. Sure, I can. I can jump in until Alicia is back. Um, yeah, because I think we lost her. Actually, oh, does look that way. Yeah. No, no, she's she's here. Okay. Oh. Um, I was just going to ask, and, and I'm sorry if I missed something previously, but per the charter, isn't it true that we have to make any compensation decisions by that July date? I'm not sure what. Kathy, what you're referring to in terms of continuing to look at it and increase it, how would that be possible? I would make what, what others are saying, Michelle, is that we could make an increase now. Yes, and we need to do that now. We could also recommend a process. And once the new council is seated, it's up to, to a certain amount. This could be, again, not wait another five years or another six years before we make another. They could come up with a way of going. So what I'm saying is if we got to, say we went up by $2,000 now, we could in another 18 months, look at another increment without the council itself making that decision or with a, um, with a recommendation from an ad hoc committee that said, you know, have it increase at the same rate as uh, the union contracts once we reach such and such a level. So I'm saying we can do something now and it's not the last time. It would be the last time to do anything for the next council, for the right. up okay. okay, thanks for clarifying that, yep. So, um... I guess that I'm still uh, at that place where I was that it seems like when we go to adding $65,000 of cost plus uh, whatever uh, employee taxation that town is liable for that gets added to that, uh, it is going to have a um, substantial impact on our ability to add even one additional position for any of the things that I've mentioned previously. 
I have been toying with a lot with the question as to whether something in between is more consistent with the bulk of the other towns that were on that chart, not trying to get the outliers high or low, including our our five thousand dollar current as being low or among the low, but uh, not feeling that uh, competing to get to the to get to the high end is something that feels comfortable uh, for me to do. And uh, but I do hear the rest of you, and uh, I realize that it's a difficult decision they're all struggling with. Uh, the question is, is there a number that we can recommend to the um, council? Because we know that the council is going to have this discussion on its own. So we're sort of in some ways going to preview and inform the discussion, but we're not going to uh, be the final. Or should we be? So I guess that's where I am, is that I don't feel that there's a need to take us to go to the highest just for the sake of uh, our matching the highest uh, for lots of different reasons that I've stated already. But I do feel like something more than uh, the, a minimum is uh, also desirable. I really am looking myself or something in the middle, but uh, ultimately this is going to be a group decision. Uh, so uh, just to keep moving it around because uh, I'm going to go with Bob and then Alicia. Bob? Yeah. Uh, is there a reason that we have to uh, come up with a final number now since the council is going to debate this? I mean, it, it it really seems to me that this is really a council decision and not a finance committee decision. Um, and so I would be comfortable saying we should uh, we all we agree that the stipend should be, be increased. We think the increase should be between X and Y and let the the council make a final decision on that. Um, because I don't see how our number is going to limit the council in any way in terms of the council's decision. And since we're sort of torn between this, I think it's it it might actually be helpful to um, the council to see that we're not, you know, we, we may not be able to, to agree on a number. Um, so that, that's my thought. Alicia? Um, thank you, Andy. So I I actually agree with Bob, but that was not what I was going to say. But I just wanted to offer that, that I wouldn't be opposed to just saying this is what our discussion was and leaving it to the full council. But I just also wanted to say I'm not sure why we're saying Northampton is an outlier because it's not. It was not the lowest, nor was it the highest on the grid. Um, it was the next the next step up above what our current one is, there's a 6,000. But if you look at the population for those towns, that was another factor that we considered. So the towns that have smaller stipends have a significantly smaller population in their town. So Northampton really is not an outlier at all. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do um, you want to put that up again, uh, Lynn? Because I think that uh, there was an eight thousand dollar in there. It was, it was East Hampton, I believe. Yes, East Hampton and Pittsfield were, were lower, but again, they have much smaller population sizes. Um, I I'm would not sure that say... that's true, actually, mm -hmm. on either one. So let's look. Yeah, East Hampton is 16, which is about like half, a little less than half. Pittsfield is larger. Yeah, 
Yeah. And if you look at Aguam and Northampton, they're both also close ish. They're still lower than our population type, but their stipends are higher. So I'm just saying, I don't see why we're calling Northampton an outlier because it's literally not. It's an outlier to where they're going, Alicia, or what it was recommended. We don't, yeah, know. We don't know what Northampton is going to do, just so everybody realizes that Northampton Council, I think this is on their agenda for next week on Thursday. So the council hasn't had the discussion yet. Lynn has her hand up. Lynn, your hands up. I actually would prefer that the council make a motion and I'd like to propose uh, an option. I mean, that the finance committee make a motion and I'd like to propose an option. Are Michelle has her hand now? up though. Yes. Well, you're making a motion. Okay. That oh. we increase the stipend by 2,500 and we reduce the um, president's stipend by 500. So this would become 500. And so this is a minus 500. Actually, it's a minus 2,500, 25, 250. And here it's a minus five. Okay. Uh, is there a second? I'm going to actually, I'm going to go ahead and second because I just want to make sure that as hap has happened uh, in council meetings when Lynn is seconded just to get things on the table for discussion. So, um, Lynn, can I just clarify? So the present increment would be 2000 instead of 2500? Yes. Okay. So this is what counselors would make when they get the full amount. This is what the president would make when they get the full amount. Right here. In the additional compensation, just on a, it's on basis is 325. Mm -hmm. So the total impact on our budget for the first year in FY24, which we would be asking the, the town manager to provide a supplemental budget for, would be for 16,000. And in FY25, it would be 32,000. Michelle has her hand up. Can you speak to your motion before, um, or shall I go ahead and recognize? I'm, I've been trying to listen to what people have been saying, and uh, I'm trying to find a compromise that, in my mind, fits with not having significant impact, fits with the fact that um, supposedly we're a mature council and the job of being president shouldn't be as heavy a lift. And I'm also trying to... Um, uh, come to uh, and also take into consideration that we have an additional pilot amount of money in the budget already of 5000 for family care so that any one counselor at this point might go out, might need that. And that means that their compensation covering family care and other things would be up to 12500 if any if one counselor took all 5000 of it. Uh, Shell. Uh, understanding that I'm not a member of the finance committee, I was um, heading in the direction that Bob suggested um, in thinking that a motion that would essentially say to the council, we've had this discussion, we think that some number between 7,500 and 10,000 is reasonable, and we want the council to to, to figure out what that number is, because I guess my concern is if we come out of, or if the finance committee comes out of here with a split vote, um, how does that impact the discussion um, 
at the council level, um, how does, if, if a motion is passed here, does that motion then be the, the motion that comes to the table at council? And then, you know, if people want to change it, they have to amend it. Um, and, and all that's fine. You know, that's part of what we do, but I was just thinking through the various pathways that this might come. If it comes out with a unanimous vote, how is that different than if it comes out as a split vote? Um, it, it, and, and I was thinking very much along the same lines as Bob. I guess the one advantage, and you've kind of touched on it now, just and then I'm going to uh, ask for uh, Matt, whose hands have been up and down a couple times, and then Kathy. Uh, there is an advantage to having a starting point, the discussion, because otherwise we're going to end up at a council meeting with uh, uncertainty as to what the starting point is for the discussion. Um, in some ways, that is a, one advantage to having a number come out of this committee recommendation is it makes it easy to then justify it and to make it the motion that starts the discussion. Um, so, but anyway, uh, Matt, Thanks, Andy. And I think also to that to to that point, um, you know, this is a matter that has a financial impact on the town. And I think it is it's our responsibility to look at the financial impact. And I think there's a really, really complicated political frame to this um, in terms of, you know, council making this recommendation um, versus a neutral party like in Northampton or other, you know, other places that that's beyond the scope of finance. I don't think that's our job to to look at that. But I, I do think that it's our job to look at financial impact, even if we, you know, look at multiple potential uh, motions and their impacts, I, I still think we should um, take a position on that and, and make a recommendation to the council um, specific to a number or a couple numbers. Um, and, and with that being said, I think, you know, the fact that we've, we've had um, other elected bodies other than council in this discussion already, you know, we we do need to look at the full impact of other committees as well as town council if we're talking about raising um, stipends. Kathy? Um, I like, well, if the motion's been made and seconded and I'd like to vote on it, I think split votes are very often helpful. I don't think it's helpful to have everything come out of committee as, as unanimous or but the other way I could call it is a punt um, that because we couldn't agree we're we're throwing it up higher. Uh, I think this is reasonable for multiple reasons. Um, it's, a, it's a substantial increase um, from where we are now. There is Lynn had another part to what she was talking about where we put the current budget has five thousand dollars in it for family uh, support and talking about having another part of a, a motion be we want to review that and see how it has worked for the first quarter for the first half a year so we can really see whether that should be increased to make it possible for people to have uh, higher caregivers so i think this is a good starting point i also think it minimizes um, in terms of the arguments on why we might have a split vote and want to go here rather than just jump up. It minimizes the FY24 um, impact by quite a bit by not going all the way up. And I think we should have, when I said we should have, I'm, I want to vote on this. I also want to vote on the family support motion. And I want to make it clear to the council that we think there should be a process. So this, we're, we don't wait another five years that we want to have something set up to say, what can we do uh, that we want to revisit this? So this isn't the only time we're looking at it. It's the only time we're looking at for FY24, um, but that we want to come back to it. So I would like to take a vote on this. I think it's important that we don't just leave the discussion wide open for 13 people. Alicia. Um, thank you, Andy. I have a couple of thoughts. Um, one, I, I don't know if I agree that a split vote is more helpful because we can also submit 
like the memo with the summary that explains our conversation, which I think would be equally as helpful. Just understanding that we've talked about these numbers and this is our frame because we also do have a pretty clear frame. Like if no one's willing to go above a $5,000 increase anyways, we're recommending between zero and $5,000 increase essentially. So I don't think it leaves it wide open for the council to do whatever, but also even if we send a $5,000 increase and the council wants to give more, they can do that. So I, I don't think it's necessarily an issue to have no conclusion at the end of this meeting and to send what our discussion has been and what we've talked about, because I think there's a lot of great points here that the council will want to know about that we send that over to the council. Um, so that's one of my thoughts. And my other thought um, is about the childcare. And I think thinking about it like, an addition to the stipend is the wrong way to think about it because it's not like where they would have the 7,000 plus the 5,000 because they would have to use money to pay for childcare first to, in order to be reimbursed first. And so that's the, the issue and I'm not gonna fight that issue right now but that's the issue I have with reimbursement is that that assumes that people already have the money to pay for the childcare upfront. And so I would, Rather, you just give every counselor an extra 5,000 to pay for the child care upfront than to say, you need to find a way to pay for it first and then we will reimburse it because we're gonna give you a smaller stipend. That's actually still not helpful, not as inclusive and is not gonna diversify the council in the way that I intended with this motion. Um, so I am not going to be in favor of this, but I also do really appreciate Lynn's listening and trying to find a compromise because I do see why you would think of this as a compromise, but again, as somebody who is low income and has a family and has all of these things, I can tell you right now, it is not going to be enough of an impact for families like me to be able to run for council. Thank you. Yes, I have one observation, which you're welcome to respond to, Alicia, because this is a conversation, but uh, for all of the counselors, which obviously is myself included, who don't have family care responsibilities presently, the increase in compensation uh, is irrelevant to the question of assisting in uh, any increase uh, or any ability to access the child care to get the re to get reimbursement, assuming it's on totally on a reimbursement basis. Uh, so why does it, you know, why would that be the most helpful way to use the dollars? Is I, you know, it's not going to, it's not going to, giving me the money isn't going to help you uh, meet that initial threshold. Kathy? I'd like to call the question to take a vote on the motion on the floor. There's been somebody's called the question. Um, is there anybody who wants to speak? Otherwise, there's no need to, to take a vote. Other, otherwise, I'm going to uh, take a vote on calling the question. Seeing no other hands go need up. A second. Second. Okay, now there's a motion that's been made and seconded on calling the question. So we will treat it as a motion. And uh, it is one that we vote on immediately. So uh, we'll start uh, one down from the first, then this one. Uh, Lynn? Hi. Question. Bob? Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll support this. Support calling the question, Matt. Um, this is on calling the question. I understand. I don't support calling the question because I I do think we should um, establish whether we're making additional recommendations beyond only counselor compensation before we. Um, 
act on this. Bernie's absent, Kathy? Yes. How about yes, Alicia? No. And Anna? Uh, aye. So, let's see how we do this now. We have to. We had four yes on calling the question, which uh, it was in one no, and um, you needed two thirds, and you and you have. So we have met two thirds. So therefore, we have called the question. So uh, the motion on the floor is uh, Lynn's motion to increase the debt and for counselors by 2500 and decrease the president by $500. That is the motion. Decrease so, the president's increment by 20. Yes, in, in, increment. Thank you for the clarification point. Uh, Bob? Uh, support. Matt? Support. Bernie, of course, is absent. Kathy? Yes. I will vote yes. Uh, Alicia? Alicia with us? No. Alicia voted no. Uh, Anna? Yes, but I believe it should be higher and plan on advocating such at the council. And Lynn? Aye. So it's four to one, uh, two resident members in support. So, uh, we do have an amount that we're putting forward. Uh, we had the note on a stated the obvious, so no need to repeat that in the south part of the motion. So, Lynn, back to you. You had additional uh, motions. Is there a next motion that you think is appropriate in order? Um. Yeah. Uh, let me just. I, I want to just for the moment show the motions that are in here. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the screen. I'm going to um, share draft motions. Um, so I the first one, uh, the second one is what I've just done. And that's the way the motion for the council would need to read. And then, of course, that can be amended. Okay. So, um, no, I wish you had put that up first, only because it makes it very strange to having not voted on the exact wording yeah i'm, I'm sorry about that and it, andy it's close enough you know um why don't we do it this way if anybody from the committee objects then please say so otherwise we will treat the motion to be that in accordance with charter section 2.4 to adopt and increase the uh, increases the amount that we just voted and uh, total compensation of 7,500, decreased present by 500, that's all. So it's entirely consistent with what we just voted. The other thing that is a necessary part of this would be a necessary part of any motion, which is to, um, we're also request the town manager to submit a supplemental budget to meet the increase uh, in accordance with uh, the section 5.6 of the charter, which is uh, budget amendments. So it's in effect uh, exactly the same motion. 
So if there's no objection, uh, Bob? Yeah, I would just take the 50% out of that. I don't think it's necessary. And I think um, as other people have said, it could be viewed as pre prejudicial. I agree. Okay. So again, if there is no objection, we will make that the wording of the motion. Since the numbers are exactly the same, and it just spells out the process a little bit more clearly. Okay, Lynn, back to you. So I'd like to make a next motion, and that is the Finance Committee recommends the Town Council view the inclusion of the family care item in the town budget for FY24 as a pilot program beginning July 1st, 2023, and for the Finance Committee committee to review use of family care reimbursements on a quarterly basis. Is there a second of the motion? Shane seconds, and I also have a comment. Okay. Wait a, um, you want to speak to the motion first, or do you want to let Kathy speak first? Lynn, you made the motion. Yeah, I, I'm just trying to set up a situation where mm -hmm. we don't just leave it in the budget and then don't follow through. I want to see what happens to it. And it may be that we need to increase it during the year or definitely increase it as we go into the next year. But I also want to be very clear. I personally do not want to know who is receiving these additional funds. I think that's personal and I don't believe that's the business of the council. Yeah. Yeah, my only comment, I'm, I'm fine with the wording of this. I think it's possible, but Paul and Sean would have to tell us if it's possible that one other place I worked, which was not a government, it was private. Um, if you knew you were going to need um, help with childcare or help with transportation, they did in advance that you drew on. So you wouldn't be what Alicia described as pay first and then go later. So I'd like or if that's possible. You know, so so we would it, we'd have to set up a process to be able to do that. So I don't want to put it in the form of a motion. I'm saying it verbally because I have no idea how complicated or simple it might be to do something like that. I, I totally agree with that. If Holly's here, she might be able to answer that question better, but I don't, I don't believe we can do that. We usually have to pay bills after service is rendered or after we've received a product that we're paying for. Yeah, just <laughs> like what Athena said, we don't prepay. Um, we don't, I'm, I'm trying to think of if there's any mechanisms like that that we have in place and I can't think of any. Holly, are you aware of anything? Uh, no, Mass General Law is pretty specific on prepayments being disallowed except like for subscription type things. That, that, that was helpful, quick feedback. Thank you all very much. So much for private sector can do it. Um, and as I said, it was only one place where I worked that knew it was a problem for some people and it wasn't for all employees. Yeah. And I think that the, uh, and I'm assuming, I just want to clarify um, that thought is is that by having regular quarterly reviews that it uh, if the money is being spent at a faster rate than uh, it would work for the amount that was budgeted to be annualized that it would allow then for a supplemental budget request or some other mechanism a transfer within Alicia? Um, thank you. My question is similar to Kathy's in that I'm wondering more about uh, process. So I, I, I support this motion. I'm just wondering if we have a process or parameters that indicate um, things like what 
activities are reimbursable? Like, is it just being on a literal meeting or is it reimbursable to be meeting with constituents? Is it reimbursable to be doing writing motions and having somebody watch your kids? So like what activities are covered or to like be going to community events or going to council readings of proclamations, like which things are covered under the reimbursement? And um, is there like a limit? Because I think I've said this before, but we have $5,000 stipends and I have overspent my stipends paying for childcare. Like I've come out of pocket over that. So I'm wondering if we have a limit to how much each counselor could access from the fund. And if we don't, who would determine those things? I can speak to that a little bit and then I'll pause here. I think for this first year for the pilot, um, I think our expectation was it would be for meetings. Um, and in terms of the limit, it would be up to the amount that's budgeted. So I don't, we weren't uh, sort of allocating it on a per council counselor basis. So um, it'd sort of be first come, first serve, and it would be for public meetings. And what would be the uh, possibility that if we did a quarterly review and we found that the amount being claimed is um, you know, only take part of the year, uh, what would be the process that you might be able to consider to supplement the amount? Do you mean increase the amount or expand yes. the scope of what it? Um, well, increase the amount uh, for meeting coverage. Group. Yeah. Um, so um, increase the amount that's available. The thing about a quarterly is that if it turns out that the amount is expended after three or six months. What is the mechanism, if any, to ex to make it a year round program? Um, I think we would look at a couple of things. We would uh, ultimately be up to the town manager um, to look at the budget that we have. If there's if there's funds that have been freed up somewhere else, we might be able to shift it over. If there's not, um, we would discontinue the program at that point. Um, again, that's why. We, we're treating this as a pilot so that we can evaluate how it goes this first year and then make adjustments to it for the following year. Um, so again, depending on how it goes the first year, there might be some ability to shift some things around, um, especially if there's savings within the council's budget itself. Um, but we won't know that until, until we go through it. Alicia? Um, thank you, Sean. That's very helpful. I'm just wondering if you could maybe write up those parameters for when we discuss with the council, like sure. what, how we think these funds will be used. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, we can do that. And we can also, um, you know, we can kind of give our thoughts on the mechanism by which the whole process will work. Um, so it's kind of clear in terms of the, you know, I've heard, I think one of the goals for this was to make the the reimbursement mechanism as straightforward as possible so we can try to put um, that to paper as well. So you had put forward, I believe, uh, Lynn, this is a motion, which yes. I seconded by Kathy. So is there any further discussion on the motion? Kathy, are you waving your hand or are you uh, around your mouse or are you? Uh... No, no, I was just literally, the only way I can see if anyone raised their hand is to click a button. Uh, no, I wasn't oh. raising my hand. Okay, I don't see anyone, anybody's hands up. So uh, we have a motion that's been made and seconded. We've had discussion. I see no further discussion having been requested. And um, so I'll start with Matt. Yeah, I support this. I support. Bernie is absent. Kathy? Yes. Uh, I mean, yes. Alicia? Yes. Lana? Aye. Lynn? Aye. And uh, Bob? I support. So we have uh, this is unanimous five zero with support from two resident members. 
And uh, there was another motion here. Yes, uh, the finance committee recommends the, to the that the town to the town council that they make no changes in health insurance coverage for elected officials. Change. Yeah, this motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion to start as do you and I? Is the maker of the motion, Lynn? You're entitled to go first. I just it. This was the consensus of the discussion last time. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. Okay. Kathy, anything else? Nope. Anybody else who want to raise any questions? So this is about uh, insurance. The last one. Just to taking notes. Okay, so uh, Kathy. Yes. I mean, yes. Alicia. Yeah. Anna. Aye. Lynn. Aye. Uh, Bob. Support. And Matt? Support. So it's unanimous with uh, and the support of two members who are resident members, one resident member absent. Are there further motions? Uh, Andy, I actually would like to raise two other issues. And since they were in the packet, I'll just show them, OK? okay. One of the things that's interesting in the charter frankly is a little murky on this and that is how we would give school committee members compensation my initial thought was they now receive three thousand dollars a year would be to raise it to four and to raise the compensation for the chair from four to five in addition to that the charter is completely silent on reimbursing the trustees of the Jones Library. And so I'm not, I don't feel as strongly about that, although I'm hoping that a future commission or whatever will address that. But I do really feel that we should be looking at the following motion. And let me just put it at the, as a motion and then we can decide whether we're gonna go forward. The Finance Committee recommends the Town Council in accordance with Charter Section 4.1D to adopt an increase for the school committee members' compensation in the amount of $1,000 for a total annual compensation of $4,000 for school committee members and $5,000 for the school committee chair, effective January 2nd, 2024, and to request the town manager submit a supplemental budget appropriation to meet an in an increase in accordance with Charter Section 5.6. Sir, second. Having not heard a second, then the motion has not been seconded and it uh, can't go forward at this time. I do want to. Uh, make one comment, however, as to why I didn't second it. And that is that 4.1D is an entirely different process than section 4.2 under which or 2.4 rather under which we're working for the finance or uh, for the council increase. The requirement uh, in that is, is that there's a process that says that it is a budget issue and not uh, subject to the time limitations. And therefore, uh, a motion can be made at, uh, at a later point and it can be considered as a budget amendment, uh, which is actually what this section provides. So, uh, I think that it's important to understand that there is a difference between how the charter treats the process for council and how the charter treats the process for all other elected officials. Uh, 
and I that was why I put the sections that are relevant to the budget up from the charter into the packet as one of those last minute ads so that if we don't end up discussing it further right now uh, you know that you can very easily find the sections that relate to all compensation matters uh, you know, on a single page and that was to sort of assist you in going through this but this is a different process and it is not time driven in the way that council compensation is kathy and andy i think by budget amendment you mean supplemental yeah. appropriation right yes you're right supplemental appropriation i i guess i was amending budget but you're right the proper term is supplemental appropriation Kathy has her hand up. Uh, yeah. Andy, I, I agree with what you just said, and I don't know whether we just also voted on library, but I think we're raising two completely different issues here, and they're different from each other, and they're different than the the what was put before us, and I don't think that's appropriate. It certainly wasn't on an agenda. Um, the library is a private entity. It's not even... Uh, town government, although we elect them. Um, so I just think it's a whole different issue. And and now is not the time to be raising this. So that that was just my comment about it. I, I think we should stay to what's before us. Um, what I'm gonna say is not intended to, uh, um, is a point of disagreement, but the charter is very clear that um, these are elected officials and that the council can uh, or that there is a process for any elected official to be compensated uh, and when you start looking at those sections that i referred to in the transition portion of the uh, charter the charter commission put in an amount an initial amount for school committee did not put in an initial amount for library trustees. But I think uh, as you look at those charter sections, it's clear that it is um, an elected office and therefore um, one that is encompassed and was intended to be encompassed. Even that was a, my, my point was just this is not on today's agenda. We're under the gun to get something back. It's a different issue. I completely agree they're elected officials, but I think it opens up a very different conversation. So I would prefer it just be removed from it. If someone wants to bring it later, that's fine with me, but I, the, the counselor compensation that Elisha and um, Michelle brought was because it could only happen within a certain time span. So I, I that's my concern with both of these. Yeah. Um, uh, well, school, been, and we've just been talking for it's uh, two and a half hours. So um, I think we should do what was on the agenda. Yeah, yeah. the, the uh, school committee one, we uh, uh, there was a motion and there was not a second of the motion so that it died on the failure of seconds of the motion. And so I think that we have taken care of all of the issues. Anything else, uh, Kathy? Otherwise, someone call in Alicia. No, no, I'll take my hand down. Sorry. Alicia? Um, and I know Kathy just said this, but I just wanted to confirm that there is not a time constraint on the raising of uh, stipends for school committee? Um, the school committee. Uh, in the end, it would have to be that uh, essentially we would request a supplemental budget and it would be up to the town manager to decide down to that request by including a supplemental budget, making a supplemental budget request, but it's not time limited. It could happen at any time. And for the for the library trustees, that would need to come in the in as part of the regular budget. It couldn't be a supplemental budget because of compensation hasn't been set for the library trustees yet. So 
Uh, no, there's uh, anything else, Alicia? Although I saw call on that, and then we can move forward. Just really quickly, because I don't know if I'm just still confused or if that didn't exactly answer my question. But maybe a better way to ask it would be: Is there still time if we don't discuss this today to discuss this again and have it go in effect for the next term for school committee and library trustees? Um, I think the answer that you just got from uh, Athena does answer it is that it's not too late for um, school committee. It is too late for library trustees. Library trustees would have to wait. And it's, a, it's, it's complicated because the way that uh, that one section that um, is relevant to, to this um, is covered, it, um, there, there's two different things. One is setting an initial uh, amount, and the other is amending the amount. Because there's an amount already for the school committee, it can be amended. Because there's no amount for the library trustees, it cannot be amended. There's nothing to, um, to increase or decrease. So um, the library trustees would have to wait until the next year's budget anyway. Sean, do you have anything to add on that? I was just going to try to add um, to Alicia's question the the eighteen month requirement that it happened within eighteen months and it kicks in the following term. Um, that wording seems to apply specifically to town councilors. Um, when you look at the charter, it references town councilors specifically, um, and that same language doesn't appear in the school committee um, section. So, that, hopefully, that answers that. Matt? Yeah, thanks, Andy. Um, I guess I will say that I'm, I'm a little disappointed that we're at this position right now. Um, you know, I think everybody here, uh, you know, including Alicia and Michelle, who did all the research initially, um, you know, agrees that uh, a, a non-biased sort of independent um, review of stipends around, around the region would be the most appropriate way to um, set an increase and determine a rate for increase. And I was persuaded, I still am persuaded that there is an urgency in doing an increase now um, to, you know, to help to start to equalize compensation and, and stipends for counselors. So, um, and, and I, I, I certainly don't agree that uh, school committee and others were not on the agenda for this. I mean, this this draft motion was posted um, and and it was um, discussed at length the previous at the previous meeting. Um, the I, I thought personally, I thought that the inclusion of uh, at least school committee, if not trustees as well, would help ameliorate some of the you know some of the potential claims that this is not a completely appropriate um, recommendation for the for the sitting group to make is to increase their own stipends. Um, but so I, I suppose setting aside another elected body stipend uh, while, while taking emergency action on the council's own stipend, in, in my mind, is, is not an appropriate um, way to approach this. And again, you know, as a finance committee, it's why I didn't want to call the question quite so quickly earlier, is because I think we need to look, our job is to look at the fiscal impact um, of all of these things. And, and we didn't even take the time to look at the fiscal impact of Lynn's proposal for School committee. So I, I have to say that this is um, this is kind of surprising to me. I, I didn't think that this group would uh, move in this direction. And of course, you know, I will. Um, I'm I'm only a resident member, and I and I'm not going to. I don't really have any recourse. But I will say that that you know this is a disappointment. Andy. Yes. Lynn. So I just want to make sure and. Alicia's asked these questions and I just want to make sure I've heard them the same way. The issue of raising school committee stipends for the upcoming term could still happen after July 2nd, but it would have to happen through a budget supplemental. That's what I've heard. However, Compensation for the Jones Library trustees could not happen in the same way because they don't already in receive a stipend. Am I correct in both of those statements? Yes. 
Okay. So for the purposes of this meeting, then I'm going to suggest we take this off the table and at some point in the near future, it might be brought back to the council and referred to the finance committee. Alicia. Um, so I'm in agreement with Lynn's suggestion. I would just hope that we might be able to bring this back at like our next meeting or the soonest meeting, because I think in the same way that it would be important for people who are looking to run for council to know, I think it would be the same for school committee. Um, and so I know that we're coming up close to like election time and pulling papers. And so I would like to have that discussion sooner rather than later. <laughs> Got it. Andy, if, if unless other people have comments, I have one other final uh, motion and it's the one I've highlighted. I'm going to read it and explain it and then just yeah. a second to it. Uh, so uh, the Finance Committee recommends that the Town Council send a letter to the 2024 Charter Commission supporting changes in sections 2.4 and 4.1D regarding Council, School Committee, and Jones Library trustee compensation and consider a method for implementing future base stipends and increases for elected officials in the Town of Amherst. That's my motion. If it's seconded, I'll then speak to it. Your second? I'll second, Walker. Um, okay. So in FY24, in fact, even before FY24, uh, I will be bringing to the council a draft charge for a um, 2024 Charter Commission review, com review Committee. That review committee is appointed by the council. It is uh, required by the charter in every year ending in four that there be a charter review. Uh, and uh, this would be one of probably several suggestions and or issues that this council or the next council may want to bring to the attention of the charter review committee. Um, and my reason for wanting to put this up now is so we don't lose sight of it. Yeah, I'm going to uh, speak to it from the sake of information purposes. Uh, we've had a lot of discussion about Northampton having a commission that has looked and being required to do that every 10 years. And what I learned subsequently is that uh, that was not an initial provision that Northampton had that uh, when they also have a part of their charter that requires that there be a charter review every 10 years, during the last charter review process, the uh, question arose and the uh, proposal from that um, group, that, that commission or whatever they called it in Northampton was to recommend that there be this uh, at least once every 10 year compensation review process that was what this whole thing in Northampton is about. Uh, but it arose out of the equivalent of our uh, 2024 process in the la and it was about 10 years ago. Kathy? I'm completely for this and I think it's been written in a way that says consider a method of which there are many. Um, and I just, uh, I think Andy said at the beginning, I'm gonna, I need to leave the meeting before it's over. So I don't know how much discussion we're gonna have on this, but I would be voting for it. I don't know if there's any other discussion. Because if not, let's go ahead and vote. Um, I don't know if you go in a few minutes with the um, quarterly report, if possible. Um, see, um, Kathy, 
Manche, yes. you're yes. I will vote yes. Alicia? Alicia? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Anna? Aye. Lynn? Aye. Matt? Support. And Bob? Support. And Bernie is absent. So it is unanimous five to zero with two resident members in support, one resident member absent. I can't think of anything else that we need to do in the compensation question at this meeting. Um, Lynn, did you have any other motions? Nope. Having no, having no other motions. Um, I thank you. This has been a very difficult discussion. Uh, I will uh, try by early next week to have a draft um, because this of our, our committee report because I want to make sure that all of you have an opportunity to comment uh, on this this report. This is not going to be an easy one, and uh, I uh, I therefore really value input and. Uh, will endeavor to make sure that is that this one is on time to get meaningful input from the uh, committee. Um, we have two other things that we need to do. Um, one is to have the third quarter report, and the other is about scheduling of meetings. Now, I don't know how we can do this very quickly on the scheduling of meetings. Um, Alicia, if I understood what you said at the last uh, last time we met, that you're still in the, uh, the, uh, for daytime meetings, Friday is the only day that's uh, available and that otherwise after 5.30. Is that, did I understand that correctly? That is correct. Um, and I don't know if it particularly matters because I know Mondays we usually have council meetings, but I do get out at three on Monday. So like a 3.30 on a Monday would also be an option. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and um, then uh, just do this real quickly, uh, at least to start. Um, Matt, you had expressed at a prior meeting a reservation about uh, 5.30 meetings. Is that still your con uh, a concern? About avoiding standing 5.30 meetings? Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I would, I, that's, that's, I mean, that's dinner time for everybody, I, th I think. I, Andy, you know, 3.30, if the finance committee didn't happen on the same Monday as the council, and we would work to not back us up. Anna? Yeah, um, I, I hate being the, the problem here. Uh, I work until either 4.30 or 5. And so it's pretty tough for me to, to flex that schedule to do 3.30 meetings. Um, so it may be a couple of weeks before I can make that happen to, to clear that time. I can try. It's I just got a name that it's it's pretty tough when technically my work day goes till 4.30 or 5. I can I can try to make it work. I just I may need a little bit of adjustment time to I've got stuff on my schedule for Mondays until for the next couple of while. So I got to uh, adjust that. Okay. Just for the record, I don't expect that we're going to be meeting more than once a month for the uh, next months. And that takes us through until we receive the uh, initial information about projections for FY25 and we start having to think about the next uh, budget guidelines. Um, Sean, is there anything you have to add? No. Um, in terms of other reasons we'd have to meet between now and then? Yes. Um, right. No, I mean, we usually do the fourth quarter report in the fall. Um, you know, there there may be some things that will pop up um, from the council that would go to the finance committee, but um, nothing that's on my radar right now. Yeah, we do have some outstanding referrals, but nothing major. Anna, is there anything more? 
because otherwise nope. I would nope, suggest sorry. That, that you just uh, um, let me know and we'll come back to the committee um, by email if need be to since we can do that for this purpose. Um, so you want me to you so just to confirm what you'd like me to do you'd like me to look at my calendar for 3 30 on on non-council mondays for the yes, foreseeable realizing future that we're, realizing we're talking about once a month for the um until the end of the year and yep, um, I, visit. i'd also like I to would, point out that many of those mondays are legal holidays that our staff don't work yeah so it may not work okay so friday may be our only viable time yeah so I have a question of Kathy. How often is the school building committee meeting on Friday morning? Uh, we are meeting only once a month, and I can we just did that schedule in July and August. Um, and that's an 8:30. It didn't even go till 10 this morning. Um, we had a meeting this morning. So and it's the next one is Alicia was there. I think it's it's July 14th. And then the August one is whatever is a month later, if it's August 16th, whatever it is, but we only have uh, once a month. So there wouldn't be a conflict for a morning Friday meeting other than we have several people who work here that don't have Alicia, And could you do the other Fridays? Alicia, can you do the other Fridays? And how about you, Matt? Sorry, say what time? My Fridays are very, oh, sorry, go ahead, Matt. Just going to say, what time? Friday in the morning. Um, yeah, potentially. Maybe, maybe we could poll for that, Andy. Anna has her hand up, though. Um, yeah, um, I can do Fridays through the end of August, but then once again, I, I, have, a, I have that job thing. Um, I think I just want to name that whatever we do pick, I would very strongly like to request and uh, you know go to bat for keeping that consistent. I had cleared all of my Tuesdays for this meeting, and so it's I just got a name that it's pretty frustrating to have to consistently change around my work schedule for these meetings when I was told they were Tuesday afternoons after council meetings. Um, and so I just whatever we pick, I really need us to stick to it because. I'm already pushing my luck here and and it's really it's too hard to keep changing them up and keep needing to move things at at my job. Um, I don't know at, about Fridays after August, because again, like I, I need to prioritize the job that helps me pay my bills so um, just got a name that this is a little frustrating. And I, I know that none of you are, are intentionally creating frustration I just I wanted to make sure that people are clear that every time we change it it's very hard. Thank you. No, that's helpful. Thank you. I appreciate your cooperation. Um, Sean, I think we um, have done as much as we can do and can go on to uh, having you and Holly present the third quarter report. I don't know. I think that Kathy may have to duck out okay. quietly at some point. I, I, I'll, I'll go quietly, but also just saying it was a great report. And I don't think I had any major questions, so I will miss your talking about it. I was glad to see. Uh, it's basically, I think, a fairly good news report on the third quarter, but I won't steal your thunder, Holly. <laughs> so enjoy your weekend, everyone. I am leaving. Thanks. Hi, Kathy. So, Sean, you and uh, Holly. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn it over to Holly Drake, our comptroller, who will um, walk us through sort of the highlights of the third quarter report, um, and then we can go over any questions you have. Um, and so I, I just realized that the third quarter report hasn't been posted to the website yet, but I will make sure that that happens today before it, I leave because we always is, make sure it is out there. Oh, it is. It is in the packet, Holly. Um, do oh, it's on the packet, right? I usually put it on our website as well for anyone in the public in the listening to be able to yeah. see it. Is it helpful to everyone if I share the screen or do you just want to listen? If, if everyone has in front of them, I don't have to share it. But... No, that's up to you. So, you know, I just wanted to say that um, sharing is always useful. Then we don't have useful. to be looking at two screens. Okay. Then I will share. It's okay, Holly, if I share and I'll just kind of follow the yep. scroll. Okay. Yep. So, you know, I just want to say, you know, in general, um, things are looking tight, but they are they are looking good. 
Um, on the revenue side, we are doing well. Uh, we will exceed our revenue budget estimates by year end. Um, just a few of the uh, good reasons for that is the investment income uh, between the rates we've been getting on CDs and the monthly um, bank account interest rate uh, that has um, increased dramatically over the last couple of years and we're doing well there. Um, other- Holly, can I just, can I hit, say on that point for a second? Um, and Holly, you, you can add to this too. I We haven't seen interest rates, um, interest rate revenue like this. I mean, when I started in 2010, I'd look back at history at, at invest, investment income at the region. And I was always envious of how much they used to bring in because um, we never got anything like that since since 2010. Um, and the, uh, yeah, the numbers that you'll see this year, especially when we're done completely, um, significantly up. Um, and we have increased in the FY24 budget. Hopefully we'll continue to increase it. Um, but this is the silver lining to interest rates going up. Um, some of our savings accounts are in the four or 5% range. Um, and it comes at a time when we have a lot of money um, as well. We have lots of grants. We have the American Rescue Plan Act. Um, you stabilization know, funds high. <laughs> stabilization funds high. So all that money earns interest. And so um, we apportion it based on the fund. So some goes to the general fund, some goes you know, MBLC money. We earn interest on that stays with the, the library project. Um, so it all gets apportioned out. But um, I'll say this is probably one of the key highlights is how well investment income is doing. Um, and uh, yeah, go stop there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, I went from putting, having to figure out how to put in point two and point one percent to going back up to twos and threes and four percent. It's great. <laughs> um, so then um, other departmental income is, is doing well, um, mostly due to um, uh, certificate of occupancy fees and uh, police outside details. Um, as you all see, as you drive around, there's a lot of road construction going on and that uh, creates more revenue for the towns in those police outside details that they are working on nonstop. Um, licenses and permits is up and on above uh, the average that it should be at this time of year, around 75% uh, due to building permits and rental registrations mostly. And then the other thing is in the um, miscellaneous non-recurring buckets, um, the opioid settlement monies were, were not budgeted. So that just gets added in. Um, and then as well as the cannabis money, which we have not been uh, budgeting at this point. So those things are just add to the um, higher percentage rates right now. And on that one, Holly, just for everyone to know. So um, uh, we are gonna get opioid settlement payments for the next 20 to 25 years. Um, we, uh, the state attorney general um, negotiated settlements with several large pharmaceutical companies and, and sort of on behalf of all the cities and towns. Um, and so there's a, a schedule, we know exactly how much we'll get. Um, unfortunately, when they did this, they didn't pass the uh, legislation that allows us to earmark it or set it aside in a way that's helpful. Um, so unfortunately, this is gonna kind of be like the impact fees with cannabis where we will receive it, it will fall to free cash and then we will have to track it and appropriate it for eligible uses. Um, there is some legislation and, and something we're looking at where maybe we can do uh, something similar to what we just did with the, the cannabis impact fees where we can get it out of free cash right away and put it into a special fund um, because A, we don't wanna lose track of how much we have because we have there's strings attached to how we spend this money, um, but we also don't wanna inflate our reserves and make, it, you know, make us think we have more there than we really have. Um, so, this year, I think we're going to get somewhere north of 100,000 because this year was the combination of a few years. Um, but going forward, it's um, thinking the 20 to $30,000 range per year. Um, and our health department, police department, EMT, uh, EMS, they're all working on the best way to allocate these funds. Uh, but it has to be for opioid remediation um, and, and to deal with the impacts. So then, um, on the expense side, um, it, it's been a it's been a bit of a tough year. Um, increases in um, costs, supply chain issues, inflation, utilities, especially electricity, have hurt many of our um, departments. The um, especially with the larger buildings, uh, the enterprise funds. Um, Water and sewer are are hurting this year because of increases in electricity costs, mostly and. Uh, just inflation in general. Uh, so many departments are probably going to end the year over budget, but 
there is um, savings other places that will be able to cover those uh, departments that are over budget, um, you know, due to some vacancies that we've had in certain departments and um, uh, the closeout of the health claims trust fund this year paid for a half a month of our premiums on health insurance. So there'll be some savings in the general fund uh, due to some unspent um, insurance premiums. So, I mean, all in all, everything will be able to be covered. It's going to be tight, but it'll be able to be covered. But you will notice um, when the fourth quarter report comes out and final numbers come in that some departments have gone over. Uh, many departments will have salary savings that will cover some of their overages in the operating budget side. Um, we are making and have made some adjustments to the FY24 budget, especially for utilities in those departments um, that operate large buildings. Uh, to try to offset some of that in future years. Um, and then the other thing that I did want to mention on the report as well is that um, here it looks like snow and ice has been overspent for the year, but that is was due to the fact that we had a very large encumbrance. Um, we at the beginning of the season put in um, a purchase order for what we think will be enough uh, salt to cover for the entire year. And then when the uh, winter season is over, we'll liquidate that. So snow and ice is actually, I think, currently got about $35,000 available remaining. So they are not overspent at year end. Um, it was a fairly mild winter, thank God. That could have hurt us as well, but uh, we were lucky there. Um, and, you know, again, with the enterprise funds, um, water and sewer are going to be pretty close. Their revenues are are on track. They're hopefully going to make it. They're very close to meeting um, their revenue budgets, but their expenses are going to be even closer, and we are keeping track of that. We have a few, um, uh, what do I want to say? We have a few um, strategies. Strategies right now to try and combat what's what's happening with them, and I think that in the end, um, we will certainly we will make it work. <laughs> um, and I, I guess that's all. Unless folks have questions, Sean or I can certainly help you. Um, I will add that to the accounting web page here in just a few minutes. Andy, Bob has his hand up. Yep. Bob, go ahead. Yeah, I just wanted to. Um, it, it's more a comment than anything, and and maybe you could, Holly, you could you could uh, elaborate on this a little bit. But the encumbrances are not necessarily going to be fully um, expensed in this fiscal year. Is that correct? Um, so what we typically are doing this time of year is we're going through the encumbrances and things that are not going to be spent in this fiscal year will get closed out. So um, this is the time of year where a lot of the purchase orders will get closed out. So if you know, and I, and it's kind of hard to explain, but if you put in a purchase order for $10,000 and you only ended up spending nine and there's still a thousand dollars left, it will show that that has been spent in these types of reports. But what we'll do at year end is we'll go through those purchase orders and we'll close them out. But then we also will be putting in purchase orders for any bills that will be coming in in the next couple of weeks um, so that we can hold those monies to set the set it aside for next year. So the encumbrances will definitely go up and down throughout the fiscal year, but they will be for things. They have to be for things that were purchased within this fiscal year. And if they haven't been purchased within this fiscal year, they will be closed out or they'll get closed out in a subsequent year and then they go back in a subsequent year. And there's a couple of different types of encumbrances. So that some encumbrances are for things we know exactly what the price will be. We do the purchase order. It's it's exactly matched up. Um, and those are typically spent out. Um, some like the snow and ice or what we call sort of blanket purchase order. So they're things we anticipate spending. We want to reserve the money. Um, so we don't give the uh, appearance that there's a bunch of money there. Um, if we anticipate we're going to spend it. But then if we have a more mild winter um, like we did this year, then we can liquidate some of those. So that's that's the case with the snow and ice one. But um, in most cases, that the encumbrances are for specific invoices or or purchases that it'll be uh, spent completely. Okay. Thank you. 
John, did we receive any written questions that you think? Yeah, we addressed some of them. Um, Bob sent some good questions in. He asked about the um, the encumbrance issue, the snow and ice issue. Um, he asked about a few departments um, that were trending higher, and I can quickly go over some of those. Um, so um, one of the departments trending higher was information services, 87%. And that one, the major driver there is that we pay for all our software at the beginning of the year. Um, so that's sort of pre-front uh, loaded in terms of expenses. Um, registrations, again, this one might finish slightly over budget. It's hot, higher. This is related to the census and when we send out confirmation cards and so on. Um, we don't anticipate a lot more expenses this year, but it could be slightly over. Um, some of the facilities, so Banks Community Center trending higher. Um, we are seeing some of our facility areas higher because of utilities, as, as Holly mentioned. Here, it's a, um, one of the things that's impacting this is we hired, um, we filled a custodial position. Um, uh, uh, the Mary's old position was finally filled, um, but that position has been working at the Bangs Community Center, but the funding for it is in the town hall, but there was just an operational decision that it would be at the um, at the Bangs Community Center for now. Um, so there's actually some savings that we'll see in the town hall budget that will offset some of the expense in the Bangs Community Center. Uh, but again, facility uh, accounts in general, we're watching closely because of the utility impacts. Um, question about the child care facility, same sort of thing, trending higher. This one had some unusual equipment maintenance and, and building maintenance higher this year than in past years. Um, so again, it might finish slightly over, um, but not significantly. And it's a relatively small account overall. Um, general fund ser or general services is trending higher at 88%. There's a couple expenses there that are higher this year that we anticipate will drop in future years um, related to some projects. So one is our uh, telephone project where we've swapped out um, our sort of landline phones and we've gone with digital phones, uh, which are less expensive annually, um, but we're still sort of in that transition point where we're uh, getting off of Verizon because we need to make sure that every single uh, safety line, emergency line um, is, we know exactly what it's for before we can completely cut it. So that one we expect this coming year will actually um, start to see a savings. And then the other one is the uh, fiber network. Um, we should be able to switch over to that fiber network any day now. I don't want to steal Sean Hannon's thunder, um, but once we're able to switch over to that, that fiber optic network, uh, we'll start saving some costs there as well with Comcast. Uh, I think that, uh, oh, there's a couple more. Um, Veterans. Uh, veterans, so that one's front loaded as well. We pay the uh, the assessment to the veterans group of veteran system that we're in with Northampton and some other smaller communities. Uh, we pay that at the beginning of the year. Uh, but the other piece there is we are starting to see a, an uptick in benefit payments to veterans. Um, it was on the tr trending down for many years and now it's starting to trend back up. Um, and this is one that we have increased FY24 budget uh, because we saw that trend coming. And then the other Last one, I believe, was outdoor pool operations uh, is higher. The pool operations, sort of the expenses come in two waves, pool operations. Um, first one in the, <laughs> the summer and early fall, uh, which is where the majority of the costs are to pay for lifeguards and, and supplies for the pool. Um, we will see a little bit in June as the pool opens up, but um, this one should be close to budget. It might, it might be slightly over, but it should be close. Um, and I think that's it. And if there's any other oh. departments anybody has questions on? I guess the uh, questions that I had is one on the uh, sewer enterprise fund. Uh -huh. Are we uh, in a position where um, we're now needing to second, second guess whether we made the right decision about the uh, rate that we established for the year ahead and um, we have enough uh, uh, reserves in that account to cover any upbridges. Do you mean should it do you, do you think we wish it was higher? Yeah. Um, I think we'll be okay again some of the issues um, uh, are we think we'll start to mitigate themselves in the coming year. Again, electricity sort of peaked and they're starting to trend back down. 
um, but we sort of saw an unusually high electricity um, this past winter. And so that piece will certainly help in the coming year. Um, the sludge removal, again, that's one that's specific to sewer. That was uh, you know, peaked again recently when gasoline got really expensive. Um, that's also come back down. So it always is sort of you know, at the, the mercy of, of uh, what's going on with gasoline and natural gas and how that impacts uh, electricity and sludge removal. Those are sort of the two big variables uh, for this fund. Um, but no, I think when we did the budget for next year, we projected conservatively, we put increases in for sludge, we put increases in for electricity, um, and the rate that we proposed supported those increases. So, uh, so I, we're okay with the rate at, at this time. I guess I had one more question and I'll see if anybody else has any. Is it too early to make any, uh, estimates about the amount of, uh, additional um, money that might be left over in free cash at the end of the year when we sign out of free cash or is that uh holly i think you calculated that number today right <laughs> no that's um yeah don't wait too early <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it's it's a too early again we should be fine on the revenue side um expense side might not be as large as in past years um and so yeah we we don't really want to Put a number out there until we get a little bit more um again the process that holly described is really critical to where we end which is closing out existing purchase orders that department heads don't anticipate they're going to spend and putting in the end of year ones for the final month uh, to make sure everything's in and so holly and her staff right now are going through all the submissions that came in from department heads for their end of year expenses they will enter them in they're doing that now and once those are entered in, then Holly and I can go in and, and see where every department's going to finish. Um, you know, we have to look at the enterprise funds and how they interrelate with the general fund. And so um, I would say probably a month from now, we'll have a good sense. Um, again, if there are any red flags or, or warning uh, warning signs, we would let you know now. But um, but probably a month from now, we'll have a better, much better sense of roughly what that will look like. We still other, have other more questions? payroll to process this year as well. So, um, although we have good estimates yeah. on what that's going to be, we need to make yeah. sure we get that last payroll processed as well, so we can have better numbers. And we're also, um, you know, the other component that comes into <laughs> our our savings too is the schools, and so they they have the same process as us, where they have to close out their budget, um, figure out where their expenses are at, and then whatever the elementary schools have left over also comes back to us. Lynn. Unless people have more, I just want to compliment Holly and Sean on bringing us this great report. And, um, you know, it's, I think, Holly's first kind of flight without Sonia. But and I know Sean's working with her closely, and um, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, yeah, thank you. We're just trying to carry on the legacy that Sonia has established. And, um, and you know, if we make a mistake, she'll be the first one to call us and tell us that we made a mistake. So, um, so, so don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, no, we, we appreciate that. Are there other questions? Hey, so I can't think of anything else there. We did, never did have anybody to go back to uh, public comment on. Yeah, there's, there's still nobody. So did... Uh, and then this can show we thought about it. Uh, and uh, I don't think that we have anything else to do today. Uh, and, do, we have, uh, do we have any minutes we need to approve? Oh, yes. Thank you. Actually, that's a good point. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in the packet, there was a uh, amended February 7th minutes that actually the amendments were pretty um, insubstantial. They were really tight typographical type errors there was no substantive i did look at the minutes for um april 3rd and may 16 which are the other two that are listed i have no suggestions whatsoever for amendments to either of those minutes so i don't know if anybody else has uh any corrections that they would like to make on any of those three minutes and if not, the motion I would be making is to 
approve the February 7, 2023 minutes as amended and the April 3 and May 16, 2023 minutes as presented. Second. Second. Yes. Take on up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so motion on minutes has been made and seconded. Uh, any uh, further discussion or further amendments that people have for the minutes? If not, then um, I think Kathy has now left us so that she's now absent. Um, I'm a yes, Alicia. I am a yes, and I also have to leave now, but I'm yeah. voting yes. Thank okay. you. Okay, well, we're uh, just about to adjourn, too. Thank you very much, Alicia. Uh, Anna? Aye. Uh, Lynn? Aye. And uh, Bob? Support. Matt? Support. And Bernie's absent. So uh, it is a uh, four yes. Uh, one one member now absent of the voting members, two resident members in support, and one resident member absent. Uh, so if there's any other business that was unanticipated that anybody else has, I have none. So I will declare the meeting adjourned. And thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. everybody. Enjoy Thanks. the long weekend. Bye. Yep. Bye.